presentation. Thank you, everybody, for coming here. So when I uh, tried to get inspiration uh, for, for this presentation, I just uh, type of Google technology is, which is the first word comes to your mind about what is technology. Let's think about the very first word you think about technology is, after especially the talk we had before. I was astonished to see that the main answer were good technology, good or bad, why is technology bad? Technology is born or bane. So indeed, the society community has an issue about what is the value of technology. What I want to tell you today is to give my contribution with the story of Quilx, the company I have started up uh, with, with my, my team, with my students, university, and then 27 people now working, about what is the value of technology. So everything started 15 years ago when we uh, when I read that, that book, Light and Colors in the, in the Outdoor. Can you switch off this, this, this light uh, or you dim down the main one? Can you switch in the room? Or then switch this off so you don't need them. So this is a wonderful book telling, telling you about... Uh, uh, better, but better. What is the light uh, that you see in the outdoor? It's written by Mina Ert, a solar physicist. It describes hundreds of wonderful lighting phenomena about the sky and the sun, the light of the sun interacting with the clouds, with the mist, with the fog, with the rain, with the foliage, with the grass, with the dust, with everything he sees in, in, in nature. Indeed, there are hundreds of wonderful phenomena. It looks like if you, if you read, uh, if you watch um, art masterpieces. No? But these phenomena were so beautiful, but so subtle, that I had never seen them. I was trying to look them. I was trying with my camera to spot them in nature. I failed completely. And one month of work, completely zero. Have you ever seen image of the sun all over? When you, for example, work in the, in the, in, in the, in the forest, do you see image of the sun on the foliage on the, on the ground? No, I never saw that. So what we started is to rebuild artificially the things. So we rebuilt the forest indoor, in a place exactly like this one. We rebuilt a sun, a big lamp, and look up. What do you see? There are myriads of rays flickering down from the foliage and illuminating all these spots. They are, someone is bright and someone is darker. But how the image is formed? Take a, a, a slide, take a slide of, of the pro projector, and of course there is an image on that slide. It was a church. Uh, and then take this uh, projector and try to look how it works, the focusing. You have a lens. A lens which, like in that camera that creates the image, every and every point on the slide, by means of this lens, is mapped on one and a single point on the image. So one point on the, on the, on the slide, one point on, on the screen. Of course, if you take the screen and, and move it, for example, put at a farther distance, you see that the image loses focus. But if you get the screen back again, it loses the, the focus even worse. So it means that exactly one point on, this, on the slide is imaged onto the screen. And if you remove the lens, it's like taking out the lens from your eye, all these miracle images is lost. But try to take an aperture. For example, take your hand, removing from the camera the lens, and take your, just your hand and create a small hole. And look through the hole. You can barely see, but you will see that the image of the church is formed again. You don't need the lens. It is sufficient an aperture. Take, for, for, for example, this uh, metal uh, plate with two small holes. Can you, can you switch off this, this lamp because create too much light on, on, the, on the screen, people don't see it. So if you look through that hole, the one is bigger on the top, you see a little bit not so sharp, not so focused, but you see here, you can still get the image of the monument there. And, and if, you, if you take the smaller hole, the image is even sharper. It's a so-called pinhole camera. So when you now look up through the hole, if you consider that forest, every and any hole in the, in the, in the, in the foliage is taking the rays from the sun and mapping down to create all this image. Every point of the sun is going through the every of this all and create one and one single image on the ground. Someone is brighter because the hole is bigger, someone is, is darker, but they are indeed all image. 
And if eventually the clouds are coming and covering part of the sun, what you will see is myriads of images of the sun covered by clouds, partially covered. Have you ever seen an eclipse in the, in the forest? If the moon is coming, eventually covering a part of the, of the sun, you will see everywhere on your clothes myriads of images of the sun close by the moon. And then if you wait a few minutes until the moon goes away, the image of the full sun is re restored. So every time the light of the sun interacts with whatever object, in the shadow, in any shadow, you can see, you can recognize the image of the source. So the shadow is not just missing light, it's a mapping, it's an image of the star which the light creates. So. What I learned is that science is a theater, is a performance, is an action. It's something the human being is doing, looking at nature and trying to grasp which are the laws, the regulated phenomena in nature. But from that understanding, we create an artificial world, an artifact, a performance, something that behaves according to what we believe they are the law ruling the nature. But from that stage, we look back at nature and see it in a completely different way. We discover for the, time, for the first time a maze like a children, that reality exists. But this is just the first step. The second one is that by means of this exer exercise, after having rebuilt the nature artificially, and not just in one case, in, in tens of natural phenomena, we start seeing, open the window, and things that before were invisible appear suddenly. So this exercise impacts enormously the perception and especially change the understanding of art. And the connection between art and everyday life becomes clear. Do you think that somebody has scratched the table around these potatoes, creating rings? Or do you think that these uh, <laughs> branches in the, in, the, in the wetted forest are eventually rounded on circles? And do you think that why the artist is drawing all these circles around something which is not what is there? Of course, these circles are just the scratches, the random scratches around the image of the light, of the three lights, which becomes visible just because of the position of your eye and of the source. And if you are in the real system and you get closer, until you are not able to focus on the scratches anymore, you will start seeing rays departing from each source, eventually of all colors. And of course, these branches are randomly distributed, but you see illuminated only those that are tangent to circles centered around the light source. This is a fact. This is the signature. The circles and rays are signature of the presence of the sun. And if you now look at the circles, you know here inside there is the sun. I am the sun. I am looking at the sun. The sun is reflected in my eyes. And in so doing, I myself become a star. And if I look at you, and the sun is shining in your eyes, you are the sun. I learned that. That's the connection between art and life means that because of that art masterpiece, now I see myself and everybody in a different way, but without the knowledge of light that he has, that we have now, the meaning of that artwork was completely lost. And we discovered that by means of a scientific, I would say even a technological pathway. So which is the real impact of that knowledge, on that discovery, on technology? So we are eyes. Our body is an eye. We are aperture to the universe. The light from the sun, from the star, enter our eyes. By means of the rays, we are hosting the sun in our body. And it's that hospitality that let us know, as the Rudolf Schwarz architect says, that the universe, the cosmic space, is an inhabitable space, is our home. Without that certainty, of the inhabitability of the space, the architecture will not exist. No anyone will move any brick here. So architecture is building houses by means of bricks, stones. It's building walls. But the object of architecture is not the wall, it are the windows. The walls are the frame that are supporting the windows. Without walls, there will be no window. But the object of architecture is the window. It's the window that connects us with home. Because the home is not inside the house, it's outside. The home is the cosmos. 
So architecture is not building the home, it's staging the home. Architecture is a theatrical event, it's a performance that represents and put on stage our experience of being at home. If you look through your window in the, in, at dusk, you will see more light outside. You will see the space, the sky, the sunset, the river, the hills, the mountains, the lake, the sea, whatever you see, you see outdoor. What does it happen when you switch on the lamp? Suddenly, the window is shut off. Any lamp, until now, as the fire, the candle, the gas lamp, the bulb lamp, whatever, so creates an illumination, but in so doing, it reduces the experience of the space which normally the outdoor light creates. So lamps ultimately create darkness. That's why I want that you switch off this lamp, <laughs> because otherwise people cannot see the screen. So light creates darkness. This is the problem. So how to solve this issue? This issue, this conflict between light, artificial light, and architecture. Architecture is building windows and lamps are switching them off. We develop a technology that starts from the physical understanding of the natural light. And look at that. So do you think these trees are blue? No, they are dark gray. But why he's painting in blue? Do you think that the mountain on the far distance is blue? No, this is just the air. The air between me and that valley. The air, if you are so lucky to live in a dirty town, gray, black of coal uh, uh, and of dust, you see the air. The air between you and the river. The air between you and the next car in the van. The air which draws the silhouette of the, of the mountains uh, and of the, of the ships in the harbor. The air which draws the silhouette of the bridge, of the mountain behind you, or behind the forest of people. The air which is the most believed to be transparent and colorless object, indeed is the last one that remains and tinges the scene. But how the air works? Normally, if you let the light go through a transparent medium, no, there is no any effect, like if you are on the moon. But if you are on the earth, you are not on the, on the, on the moon. So the atmosphere scatters the light, and we can reproduce the same effect by dissolving nanoparticles into an homogeneous medium. The fluctuation in the density of the medium, which is created by the nanoparticle, behaves exactly as the fluctuation in the air density produced by the molecules of the air do in the atmosphere, the scattered by really scattering the blue light and transmit the complementary, so the yellowish one. And if you indeed look at in the surrounding, you, you see the yellow light, the direct light from the sun that illuminates objects, and the sky, which is a complementary source that tinges or shadows uh, in blue. So we develop a material, an artificial skylight, that by means of nanoparticles recreates the effect of the atmosphere indoor. The, and we rebuild the sun and the optics, which makes you perceive the distance of the light source. This is an LED source, at, like if it is 150 million of uh, kilometers. And so you create the depth and the space, which is uh, uh, which is uh, like if you look in the, in the outdoor. The sun bursts into the scene and, of course, illuminates objects and casts their shadows. And all these shadows are naturally tinged in blue by the light from the, from the artificial skyline. Applications are in residential, in office building, in public area, in retail, in the healthcare, of course, when you, people are, are lying on the bed and eventually they have tumor in, in, the, in, in the brain and they're operated by the gamma ray burst just burning the, the tumor in their head. Can you imagine the claustrophobia they suffer? And what does it happen when you switch on the artificial skylight? They gain back the space. Of course, the technology is an artificial skylight, but the comfort is real and you can measure it. For example, on, on, on gerontology in patients has been measured the earth rate and the heart rate variability that increased by almost 20%, which is a clear and established calming effect which is created by the skylight. The artifact works as art. If you look at Magritte uh, and Pierre de Lumière, you will be surprised by seeing such a bright sky in the night environment. And that will change completely your perception of the light of the sky. The same with Coilux. So Coilux, you, are, you, you see now in, in M Milan, uh, the blue sky in the nighttime in the, in, the, in, the, in, in the street. You can switch on and off the sky as you can't do in reality. 
And that impacts the perception and works much more than if it is a real sky. And to conclude, to, to come back to the question of what is technology, Leonardo's school was always hidden in the masterpiece some detail that tells you the very meaning of, of the artwork. He discovered, indeed, the Rayleigh scattering. And in my opinion, he was hiding here in that half a millimeter of connecting point between the sky and the mantle of the Holy Mary, the connection that he discovered. It's like a flow. They had very clearly the meaning of the sky as an interface between our space, our cosmos, and the real cosmos, which is our home. And he was using this symbolic meaning of the sky to tell the story you want to tell. Now we lost the, that experience, and we are like Salmon reverting these heroes and rebuilding an artificial skylight to make you experience from scratch when you go out of the installation, when you travel in a, in a, in a street and you look out the, at, at the building in, in 100 meters, you see the air between you and that building, and you feel to be not that the sky is just above you, but you see the sky between you and the distant object, and you feel that you are already in the sky. If you want to see more, visit our website. Thank you. Thank you very much for this eye-opening talk. <laughs>